Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chat Channel. My name is Tim Hayden. I'll be your host. Please feel free to interact with us as we are live. Make comments and ask questions. If you're not caught up on Young and the Restless, then there will be spoilers, If just so you know. We have another fabulous show for you today. Our guest is the marvelous and multi-talented James Hyde. James is an actor, writer, producer, and model. He starred in shows like Sex and the City, Good Mother, Rush Hour, and more. But he's probably known best for his roles of Jeremy Stark in the hit show The Young and the Restless and Sam Bennett in the award-winning show The Passions. Please welcome Jer James to the show. Welcome, James. How are you? Hey, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. I almost called you Jeremy in the intro. Uh, <laughs> You just got yeah. me so convinced in that in that role. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, it's uh, what a what uh, what an amazing uh, um, what amazing run we had there. Uh, anyway, first and foremost, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I am the, so grateful to you for agreeing to be on here. I mean, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I'm I'm actually getting a big scoop. I feel like because I'm like your first interview after Young and the Restless, right? this time on Young and the Restless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, like I said, I mean, people know the history. I mean, uh, I was on a show called Passions from uh, 1999 to 2008 or nine. Uh, we left NBC, we went to DirecTV because uh, NBC owned it. And then uh, when when they wanted to cancel it, DirecTV picked us up for, a, I don't know, six, maybe a nine months or whatever. Um, and that was, that was an interesting thing. But anyway, after that, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't step foot on a soap stage until Young and the Restless and, uh, the casting directors, um, you know, we were always trying to find that right role. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I remember I was in Mexico city shooting a Netflix show called Menarca. And I had I had a break. So I was in the city and, and I got an Uber. Uh, took me like an hour to get to where I was going. And I finally got there. It was like a gate down the down the street. And I said, well, this is either going to be really interesting. I'm either going to die or uh, I'm going to do a really good uh, audition. So I walked in this place and uh, it's like an office, uh, you know, white walls and whatever. And the guy that I was speaking to, his English wasn't that good. And, you know, soaps, there's a lot of dialogue. Yes. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, OK, are we going to shoot against this wall? And this guy doesn't know how to speak very good English. It's not going to go well. Um, so I'm sitting there and I had to be back, uh, Menarca, uh, back on stage in about uh, about two hours. Oh, man. So the guy... I'm sitting there. I'm starting to panic now. I'm like, uh, so the guy comes out from behind another room, you know, guy from uh, LA, I think has perfect English. And he, and, uh, and, and that's who I kind of read with. And we walked into this room and it was lit up like the best uh, uh, lighting for a tape I've ever had before in my life. Right. So you never judge a book by its cover, but um so day, uh, with Young and the Restless, you know, with uh, with uh, Greg over at casting, is all we've always tried to find, and it's just never been right. And uh, and then they they sent me an audition for a screen test for uh, the uh, Tucker Tucker McCall, which uh, uh, Stephen St. John got, but he's doing a fucking great job. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, and so I screen tested for that. Didn't get it. He went to him. And then they sent me an email saying, hey, they really love your performance. Um, would you be interested in doing this uh, for this character? It was one show. That's the only show that was guaranteed. And that was in September. And I shot it. And I thought, you know, we'll see what happens. And uh, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And as I've told everybody with with everybody who's in, in in social media whether it be uh if you're in the entertainment business you're an athlete or you're just somebody who's 
trying to find your way through social media. It could be very mean sometimes. Oh, yeah. And when I first started the rule, there was a, a on uh, uh, Young and Arrested added a post about me and, and whatever. And on Facebook, there was like there was like a thousand comments. And I was very reluctant to, to venture in that space. But I started scrolling down. And from that point forward, everything that, of course, look, you're not going to please everybody. Right. There's going to be something that somebody's, oh, that didn't agree with whatever. But that's okay because everyone's got their opinion. Um, but 90% of everybody was just so uh, supportive and and they they were they really liked the, the I mean uh, Josh Griffin is the EP and the and the head writer. Thank you for for writing such a great character. But I look who I had to play with. I had some of the most iconic oh my God. people: Peter Bergman, Michelle Strafford, and Susan Walters. Uh, I got a big a big shout out to Eric Braden. He's going through a medical yes. thing right now. I know he's going to beat it. So I just want to give him a shout out right now. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the directors that I worked with and the actors, I mean, it was just, um, I was maybe in that, that, that perfect scenario. So um, it was amazing. I had, a, I had a blast. Well, during my research, uh, you know, which I watched the show, but I was just trying to see what rumors and stuff that were going around yeah. about the show since you've left. Just everything I saw was positive. A lot of, I mean, a lot of people are angry and and pissed off because they did away with your character the way they did. Mm -hmm. um, do you, since we're on on that, do you think that? Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of rumors going around. Yeah. You, number one, do you think you're really dicks? I know you really don't know because the writers, of course, are not going to give you anything until they yeah. bring you back. But yeah. Uh, because today, and this is a spoiler, everybody's watching, you might turn it off. Today, at the very end of the show, um, I believe it's Chance, Chase, that got the call. That Chance, said, yeah. And, ja and ja Jack asked him, he said, was that about uh, the situation? And he said, they found your body. Yeah. But that's how the show ended. Still, we've not seen the body yet. Right. You know, there, and daytime is notorious, even uh, Susan Walters has been killed off from the show before. So, you know, do you think there's a, do you have any inklings that there might be a possibility of your returning as a twin brother is one of the rumors I've heard that you're not really dead. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there might be a fashion way to come back? Um, I always believe that in, in daytime television, that anything's possible uh, uh, with your, your reference back to passions when I was doing passions again, anything's possible. Anything happened on that show was like, what? Um, you know, there's been many multiple people come back. Uh, the way that the show had ended where, um, because, you know, the script wasn't given to me until, uh, and then I, when I finally read it, I'm like, Hmm, interesting. Um, and so, the way it was with me or whoever wrapped in the, in, in the shower curtain. I mean, look, there's only two people there. One comes out. We always think, okay, it's gotta be that guy. Um, look, we don't know if, if we don't know a lot of things, but the one thing is this, I had the most amazing time. If this is it for me, I I've gone beyond any, any expectations, uh, far beyond that because like I said, you know, they said, do you want to come in and do a show? I, I think I ended up doing 75 or whatever. And I made an impact. So Huge. the one thing that I always said was I'm going to go in and try to do the best job you can. But you don't know because you're, 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 you're going in and you're trying you're 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 going to do what you feel is right for the character. And you're going to play it a certain way. And I feel that, um, you know, people responded to it. And in a very favorable way. And, you know, everybody like, you know, it's like Nicholson or whoever plays a bad guy. You want to you, you want to yeah. love the bad guy. And if you can do that, then then you're doing a good job. And uh, what the, the, I think the question would be, would you want to come back as a, a twin brother? And I think that I've always been up for a challenge. 
I think that would be a challenge to go back and, and, and play another character that is maybe a brother or sibling or something. And how are you going to play that? And what kind of a character is he going to be? Is he going to be a good guy? Is he, is he a, a, a brother that's been looking for his brother and trying to find him? And he finally comes to a place and, and, and then he has to deal with whoever was responsible for doing his brother in or, However, that would play out. Of course, I mean it would it would be an amazing thing. But um, with that question, when you're thinking of answering that question as a fan, uh, I want you to think about this. You don't have to talk. You know, give me an answer or anything. That's all I'm looking for. But number one, you think about the people in daytime who have done double rows. Okay, you got uh, Catherine Chancellor in March. Huge. David Canary mm -hmm. played Adam and and. Uh, uh, Chet, I can't his name, Stewart, sorry. Yeah. Kim Zimmer played a twin, a, a clone in herself. Mm -hmm. Just think about that when you're making that decision, if you if it's going to come down to a twin brother. Yeah, I mean. Don't let your fans down. <laughs> we want as you. I said, yeah, but as I said, I think that uh, I I've, I love challenges. I, I, I would love to, uh, if, if the opportunity was there, to, to do that. Um, you know, I think that by my body being discovered, I think that it could be an RIP, uh, Jeremy Stark. Uh, but like I said, I mean, it depends on how I, I don't know. I, I really didn't know how uh, I didn't get any scripts after that. So I didn't really know how it was going to play out. I just knew, hey, man, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you guys later. As of right now, you're no longer part of the show. And that's the kind of the way that we as actors have to, I can't go on a maybe or, uh, right. uh, you know, you might, you, you know, that in our business, there's, <laughs> you, you're no. either working or you're not. Uh, and, and so I'm not going to sit around and, and, you know, wait by the phone and go, I hope they call. Uh, I can't do that. So I'm moving on. I had an amazing time. Uh, would I like to come back? They know, they know. I mean, well, there again, know. as a super fan, you know, my brain goes, you know, while I'm watching the show, it goes a thousand different ways. You know, what ifs <laughs> you could have came up, been stabbed and came to after she jumped your body. You know, there's a yeah. there's a hundred different ways that they can play this. And and I, I why not are, are kind of prickly. You don't really know how they're going to do their right. You know, G.H. Yeah. kind of say, yeah, you kind of know where they're going to go. Yeah, you can't with Young and the Restless and. Man, I just I just see so many options because you are one of my favorite bad people villains. Oh, thank on you. Soaps. I mean, thank by you. far, you were one of my thank favorites. Um, one of the stories that I had uh, initially was, um, and again, I didn't know how they were going to play it out, but my whole thing was, um, either they were going to put me she was going to try to bury me in a shallow grave and she comes back. And of course my body's not there or there's a burial or whatever. And the case, there's some information that's needed. They have to uh, exhume me. I think that's what you call it. And then uh, I'm not there. So some way, somehow the body could end up or not there. And then everyone's like, well, wait a second. I thought he was dead. So, um, you know, we, we shall see over the next, uh, you know, six months, how this is going to work out. Uh, and everybody's got to remember that Jeremy had connections. I mean, he, he rigged the whole Phyllis dying and the ambulance and all of that. That's so, right. You know, he's got connections. You just don't yes. know. And That's... I want to let everybody know, if you, like me, want to see James back on Young and the Restless, you can write or call CBS and Young and the Restless because I know for a fact that they do read their emails. I mean, they love to hear from their fans and try to do what they can. So no, you, you're, you're absolutely right. Because look, I think that they, uh, when they're, when they're in the writing room and they're, and they're uh, uh, either uh, writing a new storyline or they're bringing on a new character or whatever, you better believe they're listening to uh, the, the, what's people's response are. You better believe they are, whether it be good, bad, uh, whatever, but you know, to have that, uh, um, to have that uh, 
uh, that to have that those people talking at offices or between each other on the phone or whatever, but you know, especially emails or social media, they're they're paying attention. Mm-hmm. They're paying. They, 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 especially right now because May sweeps. Yeah, May sweeps are right now. I mean, everything that's happening right now, and I, I just got it in my gut that you're going to be back. Just for the matter of fact that they're they're. Writing off or losing too many characters now. You know, Danny's gone now. All the ones, the old ones they brought back just for the 50th reunion are gone. Uh, yeah. Trace, Tracy, Beth Mat- Matlin, she's gone back to New York. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many, you know, they're losing so many characters. Or and the other thing, up, I don't know. And this is one thing that I have not talked about since I've left. Okay. I haven't, I haven't spoke about this is, you know, there was speculation that I might be part of the 50th uh, anniversary shows. And when I heard that I was, it was, it was a maybe when I heard I was going to be part of that special event, uh, which I loved everything uh, about it. Um, But I, I felt so humbled to be part of that. And I'm so grateful that I am part of that because, you know, that will, live as far as the shows live and I'll always be part of that 50th anniversary. Um, so I was, I would, you know, I've never, never spoke about that since I've left, but I was so happy and humbled to be part of it and that they had written me in on such a, a huge part of that, uh, whole 50th, uh, um, uh, anniversary shows. I, I was, it was, I was well, so happy about it. Without that. you, it would have been kind of boring. It would have been okay. Yeah, here's Neil's new jazz room. Yeah, here we're doing this with Kath. Or, you know, there would have been nothing to make everybody the, that reaction. You know, the oh my gosh, right, right. And, and you did phenomenal. And like I said, you all need to write to CBS and Young and the Restless and let them know because um, I've done it. Uh, I had Kate Linder on yesterday. She was. So excited when she saw that you were going to be on today. She really was. She's a friend of the show. She's been on a couple of times. Uh, yeah, she's I, great. I, I got a chance to meet her. And then I believe at the 50th uh, 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 anniversary party that we all went to, that was amazing. Yeah. It was it was a chance for me to, to meet more people. Because, you know, when you're there and you're working with only, uh, well, the 50th is, is what brought me t- with everybody. Right. Because, you know, uh, Josh Morrow, uh, you know, uh, Michael and, and, and Danny, of course, uh, just Lauren, Tracy, yeah. uh, 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 you know, I, I got to mingle with all of them and man, they're, they're, they're just Sean, uh, Dominic. They're just so amazing. The more, and the other thing that I, I, I wanted to say is, you know, when you get around a show, I think it was on seven, seven months or whatever, you, you start to really get to know them and they become family right. and the hair and makeup, the, the, the wardrobe, uh, the stage managers, Fritz, uh, everybody starts becoming your, your family. And when, when it was my last day, it was so bittersweet because I, I knew that I was going to miss, I was going to miss that driving the work, going, parking, getting, coming in. Uh, you know, uh, camaraderie in the makeup room where everybody talks and run lines and, uh, you know, seeing, seeing everybody. And of course not working is a bummer, but more importantly, you know, uh, when you start creating a family, that's the most, that's what you're going to miss the most. That would be bittersweet. Cause like me as, you know, just the average Joe, generally I either get fired from a job or I quit a job. Generally it's you quit your job. But, right. you know, to say your storyline's over, you don't have yeah. any say, that would just be like, oh, a stab in the heart. Well, I, I, I got another great story for you is uh, the day. Oh, sorry about that. Um, fine. The day that I. So. My agent did a check in because, you know, if you do a certain amount of episodes, your agent's going to call and go, hey, you know, how's he doing? You know, uh, checking in and, and whatever, you know. Uh, and they said, yeah, you know, we, we, we finally found the end episode for him. So his, his time's going it, to, it's, it's going to go. I think it was on a Friday and that whole weekend I was just shook. And then that, uh, uh, Tuesday was my first day back. I worked with Michelle 
and I'll never forget it. She came in my dressing room. We were running lines. We just started talking about, uh, you know, uh, the business and, 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 and remember everybody it's show business. Right. And sometimes we separate, we, 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 we have to know that that is reality. It's show business. And, um, and she really helped me that day. She really did. She, I was off. I was off kilter. I came in. I wasn't feeling. I just wasn't connected. Um, and I had a. I sat and had a conversation with her. And we ran lines, and we went. And she really helped me uh, get back into, uh, 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 you know, connecting again. And and she really helped me out. And then uh, all of those were in the um, in the uh, uh, the hotel suite. And then that's what just catapulted me to the rest is that she was always, you know, she, she was just amazing. So, um, but you know, news is not easy to get, especially when you're having so much fun, you know, you're like, Oh my God, this is great. I'm having a blast. And, and, and what I'm going to be doing this and that, whatever. And then, and then, you know, when, when the, when the finale comes, the reality is like, Oh, sh okay. And then, and wow. then you just try to steamroll it and go, I want to do the best I can, um, uh, you know, and, and really when you leave, you leave, but you, you left, you left a mark. So that's, that's what right. I was trying to do. Well, I mean, it, I've often wondered this and, and well, not really wondered. I don't think I could do it. It shows true professionalism. You pulled it off. I'm not one that reads the spoilers. So I didn't know that that was going to be your last show ahead of mm -hmm. time. Um, but you know, and that that was like your last scene and still being able to pull that off because you are a true professional actor mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, and you did that because I had no clue until after that, I started hearing rumors like, oh, okay, well then I'll look. And I found well, out that you, you probably wouldn't. Well, you know, it, it, I always consider myself a team player. And you know, when I left that day, um, because we shot that the, the, the show that we shot, uh, 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 the reality show, the one I'm in supposedly wrapped in that, that was shot on a Friday. And so I still had to come back and shoot a show that was out of sequence on the Monday. And oh, there was wow. so much dialogue that we had. Uh, but on that Friday, I kind of, we shot the last thing and, uh, I'm sitting there looking at it and uh, and I left that Friday and I was like, you know, it, it kind of sunk in. But then I'm like, well, hey, you can't leave now in your brain and your spirit. You got to you got to stay here because you got another show you have to shoot on Monday. And then and then I had to clap off uh, and they were amazing. I told everybody, you know, how I felt about it. But the one thing you got to remember is this. Is you, you got to be a team player. And what I mean by that is. That Friday, when, you know, because we shoot, you know, two or three weeks out, three weeks out, I could have easily went on social media and said, hey, guys, uh, yeah. here's I'm done. And I didn't want to do that because I don't think that's right. I, you know, you, because if I would have done that, then everybody would have known, no, 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 uh, no anticipation. They would have already known. And I think that would have blown everything. So that would have also affected you, I think, in the future, though, if you had done that. You know, oh, for sure. People in the oh, future for sure. Be like, I don't because, know. We can't trust him. <laughs> yeah, because look, if you're going to be a selfish person and, and only think about yourself, then you you won't last long in this business. So what I did was I straight lip, even my family. I've had family to call me and and they're like, uh, hey, did did so and so so? I go, well, the show's airing on whatever. You just have you just have to watch. And I think that's the way that, that, that you have to be, you know, you, you, uh, so I didn't say a word and, and everybody was blowing up my phone that day <laughs> and they're like, what, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's exactly why I didn't tell you because to get this reaction. That had to be like, God, now I could talk about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, well, I mean, uh, that's happened. I know that's happened to you probably more than twice, but I know twice because when you played uh, in Passions is Sam, you played, you were there from episode one. You may not have been in every episode, but you were episode last. Two. Oh, I, I started it and ended it. And I was very proud of that because 
if you look back at passions and when they NBC has every nostalgic thing in the they know that my character, I played that character from day one. So I was very proud of that. And, and I'm, I'm not going to lie and say that I watched it wait, uh, daily because I didn't, but I have been watching, you know, jumping around and it really caught my attention. Now, I, uh, towards the end, they're wanting to baptize the witch and the priest is like, no, I can't do that. Now I don't know what's going to, I have to watch. I haven't gotten far enough along to find out what happened to Tabitha, you know, if they baptize her or what. It's like, yeah. oh, my God. So, you know, I'm just reliving it. It's all oh, new man. to me. We, we, Passions was way ahead of its time. I think that uh, Time Magazine, funny enough, uh, came out and did an article. Why? I mean, because we knew during the 90s, the soap audience was declining because, uh, you know, there's so many other options, cable television, uh, you know, um, and they were like, why? Why would you do? And this was to the NBC executives because they owned it. And um, and that was the biggest question uh, on why on earth now would you do this? And I don't know if they did this purposely. I, I did the uh, one of my bucket lists as I was in the uh, uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade. We had our own float. And it was freezing. I remember my feet. I couldn't even feel my feet. And one time we pulled up and you, know, you stopped. And there was like thousands of cheerleaders, like uh, middle to high school, just, I mean, thousands, right? So we pull up and we stop and all of a sudden it went crazy. I mean, it was just, uh, it was, it was, it was great. I looked at Galen, my friend Galen, I go, I think we got a hit here. Uh, so what, what that, what I think they did may accidentally was I think that they created a new audience for soap operas. Because our, our audience was was really young, mm -hmm. ranging from super young to, uh, you know, uh, older. So uh, it created a whole new uh, audience. And the creators of Passions, whoever, I'm, I don't know who it was, but whoever created it was... James Riley. The, he was in the time, because yeah. in the 90s when he started that, think about it, that was when Charmed came out on primetime. Yeah. That's when Salem came out on prime time, mm -hmm. the vampire diary, you know, all of these dark wizard warlock, yep. you know, dark shows were coming out. That was the thing. Supernatural. And to, bring that to, and to bring that to daytime, that was phenomenal idea. I mean, yeah. phenomenal. I think and, that they probably thought, you know, we're going to swing for the fences and create these, these wild stories and just see, you know, uh, how long this is going to last. I mean, when we first started the show, the first like three months, because we had a lot of actors that were, I mean, all of us. I mean, I, I had done a few things. Uh, I, of course, I did Another World and Now's the World Turns and a few other projects, uh, Sex in the City and uh, mm -hmm. a few other projects before that. But there was a lot of actors that we had that were, that were green. Jesse Metcalf, uh, yes, uh, Lindsay Hartley, uh, the, all of these actors that were first timers uh, that jumped right in, and and uh, and you know we we got some. Uh, look at the people that have branched off from Passions. I mean, Justin I Hartley, Jade uh, Harlow, Jade Jim Harlow, Harlow, who who I try. <laughs> year there was a movie that I shot in uh, in Washington, and there was three characters: me, Christopher Warren. And there was another actress who, and she had to be Native American and a, a character, but you know, uh, Jade had her hair a little lighter uh, and, and I asked her to come in and audition and she killed it. And that was my choice. And, but the producers went with somebody who's, you know, authentically, uh, you know, Native American, but uh, I love Jade. She's, she's, she, she, at passions and then she, whatever. And now she's just, she's just doing so well. A great person as well. But was, you know, she, uh, what, she about, like what about, what about Midland, the band Midland, mm -hmm. yeah. Mark Weiss, Weistrack, who was on passions and, and is a country music band called Midland. They are amazing. Was up for like yes. four Grammys. Uh, so we've had some people who have branched off and have done some, some amazing guys. Of course, Galen and Eric are still on days. Uh, Brooke Kerr well, is on. Uh, even the, like I said, the creator of Passion or whoever did the writers, like James Riley. Y'all jumped right in at an hour, right at an hour slot, and that 
is rarely heard of in a soap. They usually start out 30 minutes to see right. what it's going to take. And then yep. it goes to an hour. Y'all are one of the first ones that went full on an hour as soon as you jumped in. Yeah. Which was phenomenal. Yep. I mean, yep. Like I said, I'm hooked. Uh, I love Jade. She, she was on a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago. And I, I guess my first introduction to Jade was The Bay. I'm a huge Bay fan. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, Gregory and all of them and Wendy and Christos, they got, they've got something good going on over there. I Never really, seen it. I, I really like it. It's, they take what I call what uh, fan dreams. He, he takes people from every soaps, you know, uh, Andrea Evans uh, mm -hmm. from One Life to Live. Uh, he's had uh, Fiona Hutchison from Guiding Light. You know, he just, uh, I can't think of the actor's name, but he he plays Scor Robert Scorpio on General Hospital, you know, right. Mary Beth Evans from, you know, he just, and it's like, oh my God, things you dream of having these characters, you know, meet. Yeah. due to uh different companies they won't let you abc nbc and all of that they don't let you do right that, right so. right yeah I've that's never what seen i like it. about the bay i know jade i know jade was on it so uh i heard she was doing a good job but uh yeah she man you know did a good job yeah she has I, i've kind of become friends i say friends with gregory the creator but uh yeah i do i try to get all of them i've got three or four more of them from the bay coming on next week i think cool Nice. I've show. never met Gregory, but, uh, you know, I heard it's, uh, you know, like I said, I've never seen it. And uh, I, I've, I've, you know, I'll of course I know because of Jade. I have to drop a bug in Gregory's ear. About yeah, you. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I got some, I got some, yeah, we got some stuff. I mean, uh, May I mean, they're 17th, not long. Very few of them uh, have long roles. Like Mary Beth does, uh, you know, there's a few of them that have the long roles, but there's some that come on for two or three episodes and that's it. Right. Which is great to us fans, you know? Yeah. 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 I got, uh, uh, I have a show that I shot, uh, last year in uh, Colombia and Bogota. It's called La Reina del Sur, which is Queen of the South, Kate Castillo. And it's going to, it's going to, it was on Telemundo. Uh, and then now it's going to, it was on Netflix, um, uh, uh, in, uh, in Mexico, South America. And now it's moving to Netflix March, May 17th. Uh, and I play, I'm in five episodes in that. So, and I play an English uh, uh, guy, bad guy again, which lately I've been, I've been cast on a lot of, because, you know, Sam Bennett was the moral compass uh, of, of, of uh, harmony. Oh, and for, sure. for me to get out of that and, and to do these other characters, it's been, it's been fun. I, I identify with these, with these guys. Even, I, I identify with good guys too, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, most of your roles have been good guys. Even your, your coast, when you, uh, uh, when you surprise, whatever guest star, that's what I'm thinking of guest star yeah. shows, you usually play a good guy. So it's, it's, it's good to see you in a different role and, and yeah. you do phenomenal. I mean, from well, station was, 19, I was on station 19 um, a few months ago and I played a, a lawyer uh, asshole dad. Uh, and that was fun to play uh, because I did play. We, we shot uh, the, the rehearsal and I started, I was kind of ad libbing a little bit and they kind of liked it. So, uh, and that was fun to, 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 to play there. I had, I had a blast. Uh, great people on that show. Um, so it, uh, Shonda Rhimes is the, like the EP on that. So, uh, oh, yeah. it was fun to do. so anytime I can get out there and do something like that, that was fun. Oh yeah. Get involved with Shonda land. That'd be awesome. I mean, yeah. Grey's Anatomy, it's going on 20 years. Now it's <laughs> just like, a, it's like law and order. Yes. You know? Well, I mean, I hate to say this. And I've said it before. I, I love Grey's Anatomy. I've always been a huge fan. I've seen every episode, but me and my best friend, both, we've been friends for 30 years, huge fans. But the last few years, it's like, Oh, it's renewed. Really? Really? Yeah. You know, because it's kind of like, okay, what more can happen <laughs> to this, this group of people? Well, uh, I do want to commend I, you on something personally. Yeah. I don't normally bring this up, 
you've been married to your lovely Stu wife, Ling. Stu Ling, for 29 years. Actually, 30. Well, could, that's even better. Congratulations, because you don't hear that in Hollywood often. Do you have a secret? Yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. Um, I saw it. I was like, I've got to bring this up, because yeah. it's just it's just so rare to hear. So we, we've been together for 33 years. Wow. Uh, we met in Spain, in Madrid. Uh walking down the street and uh I, my buddy kavika I, I used to live in hawaii for about five years my buddy kavika i said who's that girl and he said suing and i go okay and he goes well she has a boyfriend i go okay well i'm just gonna go over and say hello you know i went over sashayed over you know doing my thing and so i come back and uh he said how to go and i go it bombed uh and <laughs> she didn't say anything and, and he's like, what? I go, yeah. He's like, whatever. So um, uh, lo and behold, her her first language is Spanish. So when I went over, I was talking really fast and whatever. She said, it's hard to understand you, whatever. Uh, and then uh, so we met in Madrid. Um, and then uh, uh, a year later, I was in Milano, uh, Italy, walking down the street. Same scenario. I saw her. And I'm like, Su Ling. And, and, and Milan, you got the trams that, that pick you up and the trolleys or whatever. And uh, I was, uh, you know, what are you doing tonight? We no, no cell phones then. And she goes, nothing. So we went out to dinner that night and uh, we've been together ever since. That, that, that's, I love that. I love yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Uh, did, I do have a question, though. Did she have an issue with you in 2002? <laughs> When you did your with, Playgirls cover, with with what? When you did your Playgirl cover? Oh no, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, John, You're a better man than me. That's all I can say. You're a much better man than I. <laughs> uh, John Russo, who is a big, big photographer right now, yes, is the one who shot that. And uh, um, I think John Russo shot that. I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, initially NBC said no, uh, couldn't do it, and I was at, I, I said why? Because uh, I had to internally come up with the decision myself. Like, do I really want to do this? And um, and then I found out who's shooting it, and then I was like, wow, okay, he's really good. Uh, it's going to look good. And then NBC said no, uh, we can't we can't let. This character, because James Riley, who created uh, Passions, I met him once. It was in New York City. We were doing a signing. He came in for five seconds and was gone. And James Riley didn't really want to get to know us as 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 James Hyde, because right. he always had this image of Sam Bennett. So he never wanted to, to have any other ideas except for the characters and, and didn't want to meet us for that. Um, then they came back and said, uh, uh, after a conversation with John about what was going to be shot, how it was going to be, whatever. Um, and then they said yes. And I said, yes, I, I would do it. And uh, I'm glad I did it because I, I think the, you know, I think the pictures are, were really good. They were, they were they tasteful, were really, really good. I was fixing to say before everybody goes Googling, they were very tasteful and there is no nudity, which I think is phenomenal because they were great. And I'm a hetero man, you know? Yeah. Right. They were, they were great pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I liked them a lot. I, I just uh, don't want people to think that you were doing some porn or something because you weren't, you're, you're. Well, you're I mean, man. and like you said, you said it really well. It's like, you know, look, it's, we're not hiding anything. It's up. It's up on uh, just Google it. James Hyde Playgirl. You, you'll see it. Uh, and and it's it was done very, very well. And yeah. I like that because when I first when I first saw that you were, I was like, oh, no, Playgirl. Oh, no. Yeah. Of course, you know, like everybody else, I had to go see what was going on to see. It, and I was like, oh, these are great. These are oh, great. trust I me. Like these. It was me, my wife and uh, my my manager and, and some other people in the room. So every image we did a, a you know, a pretest had to be approved uh, before we would continue. So, um, yeah, so there was a lot of, but he, he he's amazing. He, he you know, right. we, we knew, but, you know. Right, for sure. Um, 
Well, let me ask you this because you were talking about passions and you, you said it went to uh, satellite. I know there was direct TV, right? Direct. I know there wasn't. Well, online stuff was just starting to come out 2009, 2010. I've said this about Guiding yep. Light. Do you think that if they may have held out for another year that they could have hit the digital? Because 2010 was about the time that everything was going, switch it's starting to go to digital. No, you're right. I, and I remember this because uh, after Passions, uh, my wife and I went to Puerto Rico for a year. And when we came back, we came back in a perfect storm. Uh, writer strike actor strike the economy blew up mm-hmm. and streaming first started happening so everyone was like what where are we uh what's going to happen and you know where is this where where, where where is this going nobody really understood it um and i truly believe that if it would had been 2012 uh i really believe that it would have ended up on a streaming platform, uh, maybe a different condensed, not so many shows because right. uh, La Reina del Sur is on Netflix. I think it has, um, I don't know, 60 episodes. So oh, maybe wow. it would be something like that, that you could do. Uh, right. Not your traditional soap that shoots 200 and some shows a year, but maybe condense it down and have that platform. I, I, I really believe that it, it could have happened, uh, you know, um, and everybody, everybody in passions. I mean, you know, it's tr- like, like young and the restless they're, they're, I, because I didn't I, look, I was only on for seven months, but I truly believe that I was starting to really feel that at passions, we hung out uh, Galen. I knew Galen Gehring before passions. I knew him. We used to live in Miami together. We used to play two man volleyball. Uh, we used to model, we modeled and all that. So I knew him before passion. So when we, uh, our dressing room was right next to each other. Uh, we hung out, uh, Jesse Metcalf, uh, um, uh, uh, Kim, Rodney Van Johnson. Uh, we, we, we hung out with each other. We, we really took that because we were all kind of implants, you know, uh, uh, Eva Tamargo is Moses, my son's godmother, and she's been very proactive in, in our life, and we love her to death. Uh, so we really kind of, uh, um, you know, we 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 were truly were we we had a great relationship. Everybody that ever came to Passions, every guest star and every uh, co-star, or whatever, they always said that you the Passions. Uh, 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 cast made them feel so comfortable and so welcome, and right. that's certainly the way that Young and the Restless. The first day that I did my shows, I did them with Susan, and then when I came back, uh, like three weeks later, I was working with Peter and Susan uh, and Michelle, and they were. Well, he froze up. We'll get him a couple of minutes. See if he pops back on. Um... Wow, we found out a lot of information today, aren't we, about James and and the soaps. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to ask him. Like, there you are. There we go. There we go. I was just telling everybody we're going to hang out because we were talking about how phenomenal, how much information and that you were sharing that it's phenomenal, you know, about the soaps, about even passions. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, you know, if you spend nine years on something, you think that's, that's a big chunk of your life. Uh, For so sure. it, 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 yeah, I guess we're going to have to watch Salem to see how good it does. Soaps do on the, cause uh, they're the first ones to go to streaming. It's on Peacock, right? Yeah. Um, I get nervous and I can't think of the names of these shows. It's one that's still streamed, but it's the one about Salem. Uh, Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives, yes. Thank you. Sorry. I get yeah. nervous. I'm a fan. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Listen, I, I'm here to, because a lot of times I do the same thing. I, I know, uh, you know, like dates and shows and actors. And sometimes I feel bad because I forget an actor. And, I, and I'm like, damn it. I wish I would have 
remembered his name, but. So you asked me all my children, young, even young, well, the older, young, and the restless, um, guiding light, one life to live. I could tell you pretty much anything. Those were my primary shows. And then Passions yeah. came out. I had just graduated high school. I was out, you know, having to work full time at a family. So I wasn't able to watch Passions at that time. So yeah. I'm late to that game. Yeah, And as you said about the streaming, I was late to that. I'm just now started. I'm finding shows from 2010 that I never even knew existed. Beacon Hill has been around for about five years. I just found out it's, it exists. I'm right to watch it. You know, just Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, look, I, during, the, during COVID, uh, it was amazing because uh, we were the first show uh, back full on uh, in Mexico City. Uh, Menorca, we were the first show after COVID. We were probably one of the first big productions. Selma Hayek was executive producer. Uh, Lemon Films was the production company. We were one of the first shows back. And I think that everybody was kind of looking at us. Uh, can you do it? Are you, you know, can you figure it out? I remember uh, my son who plays my son on uh, Menorca tested positive for COVID. And that's, that's when it was the 14 day um, oh, wow. incubation kind of thing. And uh, then I was uh, doing one in, in, in Bogota, Colombia, and uh, somebody, uh, the, my, my uh, uh, Victor Rabul, Rebel, Rebel, uh, tested positive, and it was a five day uh, because everybody, I had my COVID uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, so things, st things were so serious, and then you could just see how everything was just starting to, we got to know it, what it was, and the effects, and um, you know, so as far as production goes, though, you couldn't work on any show unless you had your your COVID uh, vaccine. Um, uh, and Jackie I, I, Zeman you know, was Jackie Zeman was on my show a while back. She told me about got General Hospital's procedure right now, and even still, you know, you have to everybody who's not on scene has to wear a mask. You have to be tested two days before you're set to be on scene. Um, and you have to be tested by Disney Corp. You can't be t tested by your own doctor. You have to be tested by Disney. And it's just like, that just seemed a little extreme still at this well, point. We, at YNR, we had to wear a mask. Uh, we had to have the, the, the PCR test done every Tuesday and the, the, the antigen test uh, every day. So, oh, wow. um, and I think that since when I left, they were shifting it so it was more condensed uh meaning in the hallways and stuff you didn't have to wear a mask but on set if we weren't taping you had to wear a mask so it's starting to ease up uh you know on on set i know california had a lot more which understandably had a lot more stricter rules i'm in kentucky um no i don't i don't agree with that do you know i, I don't know i i think that california went way beyond i i, I didn't agree with it See, I, thought Kentucky I, I, was too I think the kids, ki I, I'm talking about the kids. I, forget oh, about okay. me. I was talking adults. I'm talking about <laughs> kids. Kids, I think, lost out on some, some time in their life that they're not going to get back. Uh, some didn't graduate. Some had to do things on Zoom and this, that, whatever. If you look at other states like, uh, you know, Florida and California, at the end of the day, you're going to collect data. Who was right? Who was wrong? It's, it, you know, whatever, but um, well, I think you were just meant, saying, regardless, even not even talking about educational, all of the school kids through that period missed an important part of their life. Yeah. As far as communication and, and right. relationships and. Exactly. Because listen, at the end of the day, you can learn a book and read it online, right? Right. Well, what you're going to miss out on is what you said. You're, you're, you're going to go to school. You have to deal with certain scenarios every day. You have to deal with your teacher, your friend, but you have You're to do social uh, uh, sports. Uh, sports is such a uh, important part of the kids, whether you're a, you're a tennis player or you're a football player, basketball player, whatever. Th those are huge things that you must become. That's the most important thing about school. Yes, I agree 100 percent with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, especially the young ones, I would say that I'd say about five or six when it started are really got affected because mm -hmm. that's when you really start to learn from each other, from your friends, right. and you didn't have right. friends to learn from.
Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. So are you on board with the new way they're doing uh, auditions now? The Doing video submissions? Well, you, <laughs> you got no choice. <laughs> right. I have I have a space in my house uh, that we've I had an office and we've converted it into I have multiple backgrounds that that I have uh, I bought all the lights. Um, and at the very beginning, I, I didn't really. Um, I don't know, I just thought it was like I didn't take it as serious as I do now. Uh, at the very beginning, I was like, this is uh, how are they going to hire somebody off of a self tape? You know, um, but all the teachings was out there from casting people were saying, you know, this is what I suggest, how you light it. Uh, you know, they, they showed you, you know, how you want it done. And everybody has, uh, uh, you know, iPhones now where the quality is really, really good. So I think after six months, I was like, I was calling them in basically. You know, I had my paper in my hand. I was just like, going through the motions and uh and somebody said you know that the, uh there, there there's going to be no more in-person uh auditions i've only went to i've in the last three years four maybe three years maybe more i've i've been to one maybe one in-person audition and a couple of commercial ones other than that it's been self-tape so wow. I think they found the formula where you could open up the doors to a lot more people. They made uh, a lot self tape, everyone can phone it in. But they made it a lot harder on you all because you had to, I mean, if you didn't already know about lighting and you didn't know about how to do recording yeah. and maybe yeah. minor editing and, you know, yeah. you're an actor. You didn't sign up to be all of this engineering well, stuff. <laughs> the only thing I can say about that is uh, the every it, like the music business shifted when streaming happened. You had to figure that out. Uh, acting, you know, when, when COVID hit, we, Hey, we got to figure that out. Um, so it's just something that comes in, you, you know, and we all have to be versatile and, and, you know, think on our feet and, and be ready for, for anything, you know, and there's a lot of people who left California, um, and said, I don't really need to be here anymore. And California is right. so expensive. Uh, it's so expensive. So, we even had thoughts of, you know, um, you know, where, where we could be anywhere. And, and cause I could do a self tape anywhere. Right. Um, you don't really need to be here. So well, there's a lot of people was, who left for Texas. A lot of people left for uh, Oklahoma. I, was say, I know a lot of people that moved to Texas from California. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still a close kind of close commute, but not really. Yeah. Oklahoma, Oklahoma was been shooting. I shot a movie there uh lindsey hartley uh directed uh prisoner of love and it was so it was so fun to be with her on passions and then she directed me she's an amazing director uh yeah i'm trying to get her on the uh, show that too. <laughs> what's that so i've been trying to get her on the show the last few days too i haven't I've got trying to catch her she's so busy right now it's like oh, she's, i know uh, well like you were saying you know oklahoma um atlanta Nashville, you know, have opened up as yep. far as getting production. Well, even little old Kentucky, we've got a couple of things going on. Uh, I know Ethan Hawk just shot something out in eastern Kentucky, and I think mm -hmm. he's coming back to do a, something else. Mm -hmm. so, and I think that's great that it's not just California anymore. Well, it couldn't be. There, there's no way California could do it. I'll tell you why, because Years ago, when California was shooting, and, and I got five more minutes and then I got to jump, but uh, years sure. ago uh, in California, years, I'm talking going back 20, maybe, uh, maybe in the 80s, um, they made it so, because, because once you think that there's no other place to shoot, and then Canada said, come here. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we get, we, we've got people uh, who are trained. You could shoot whatever you want here, and it's going to be half the price. And then all of the other states started opening up with tax breaks and whatever. The only problem is when I was in Oklahoma, there was four productions going at one time. They, at, at, and this was like a couple of years ago. Uh, they were having to pull a lot of talent, uh, crew and everything from Texas. They're, they're really they don't have the force yet, but they can bring them from Texas. That was the only problem with like Detroit. You'd have to bring them in from New York or whatever. 
So if a state be- can become self-sufficient and have these tax breaks, it's like, hey, come here. It's cheap. You're going to, you, you know, and California shot themselves in the foot, just like Miami did. Miami Beach, uh, when I was there modeling back in um, uh, 1990, uh, uh, no, 1990, yeah, 1990 to 94, all the, the Germans came, the English came, uh, big catalogs would come and shoot there and, and be there for 14, 15 days. Uh, and then Miami started doing the same thing, get expensive permits, can't shoot here, you got to need, need a permit, whatever. And then they went to South Africa. They're like, hey, we just want a, a place where I can go to the beach and shoot some pictures. Right. And that's what happens. People think they're going to be here forever. And they're not. They're going to look. Hey, what's what's the next step? You know, how can I save money on this? Yeah, it's all about our, money. We're in a red state, and well, I don't know how, but we've got a Democratic governor, which won't be long. But he yeah. wrote he wrote a lot of dis. I don't want to say discounts, but a lot of deals to help bring try to bring some of a recording. You know, to yeah, tax right and stuff. You know, Kentucky's got as good a place as any place to go, but it, it just needs somebody in, in a governor or whatever that's going to attract that and, right. and make it worthwhile for them to come and shoot there, you know, and, and uh, but, you know. Well, James, I know you got to go. I appreciate you being here. I hope I hope that you will help me. I just popped in my head while we we're doing the show. Maybe we can get together, put together a passions reunion. Yeah, some of you offering passions and just have a show where y'all can just talk about good old times. Were you were you part of the passions reunion that we had on Zoom? No, no. I we wasn't. we did a passions reunion, man. It was uh, wow. It, we we had pretty much pretty much everybody. That was a that was a, you know, uh, and uh, it, and I saw the numbers of people that were. I mean, it was ten thousand, and then it's, it kept growing, uh, right. and that just shows you that people still know it and they love it. And passion. I mean, uh, uh, soap fans are the most loyal fans. That, yes. that's, I love. I love them all. And I, uh, I, you know, the last night I did my uh, Instagram live, and I had so many responses and people. You know, they're <laughs> they'll let you know how they feel. Uh, oh yeah. And, but I love it. Yeah, we'll do that. Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll try I, to. And like, I think I had two other reunion shows. I had a Gaddy Light and uh, All My Children, and those were one of my best shows because yeah. everybody wants to see what's going on with you guys. But you know what it is? And it's there was a great show. I think it was on uh, um, VH1 where they would, uh, they would, they you know, back in, the, they would try to find these 80s bands. And, and see if they would do a reunion, you know, where are they now? And I think everyone it, it loves to know after, a, a, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, what, who, what, are, what are they doing now? Or are they still doing stuff? And, and, and you know, uh, well, you and just to up, reconnect. Y'all are part of our family. Y'all, more than any other show, type of shows, movies, primetime, it doesn't matter. Daytime was in our home five days a week, almost every day of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, y'all were part of our family. So that's, that's walking why. down the street, you know, you'd be Sam, <laughs> why did you do that? And I'm like, uh, not Hold Sam the at the moment, but I'll tell <laughs> Sam when I go back to the dressing room that, you know, you should have done it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I would love to, if you want to get me a list of people and I will do what I can to get in touch with them to make it happen. I would love to. Yeah, but, you know, like I said, there's there's still but you know I the mean, people who get along and who don't because there's been a couple of times I've almost scheduled two people on my show that I didn't know didn't get along till a third party came and was like, uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I got to be honest Scott with Bryce you. telling me Scott Bryce is usually telling me you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, everybody that got on the passions on the thing there, I don't think that there was uh, uh, anybody that I can remember that really disliked another person. I mean, at I least I together, I was putting together a reunion show for as the world turns. And there was a couple that I didn't know had recently had a very messy breakup and I was oh, going to invite them. Ooh. And I asked Scott Bryce about, you know, cause he was going to be on it. He's like, 
don't do it. If you haven't done it, you better not do it. It's like, oh. thank you for telling me. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Well, yeah. Well, we'll, but see, we'll that's try what my to show do is. that. I am not a got you show. That's why I told you when I talked about your wife, I don't normally bring up your private life because that's your private life in my opinion. And I, it just irks me to see journalists because I'm not a journalist to so-and-so's getting a divorce. So-and-so split. Yeah. That's y'all's biz. That's private. Yeah. That, and I don't agree with that. I just don't agree yeah. with doing that to people. Yeah. And, well, there's different journalists for trying to get a reaction or there, there, there's, there's good people out there and there's people who, want to stir up shit and uh mm -hmm. and those are the ones we try to stay away from well i'm not one of those people so you know <laughs> hope come back and i hope we can make the passions reunion work all right my man thank you so much for having me on it's so much appreciated thank you james you're awesome man all right, appreciate brother. it speak to you soon all right sounds great i'd like to thank james hyde for being here and chatting with us <laughs> I'd like to thank the Necrotizing Fasciitis Foundation for sponsoring our show. For more information on necrotizing fasciitis, please visit www.necfasci.org, www.necfasci.org. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more episodes. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. It'll help us out a lot. And as usual, please remember to be kind to one another.